He's going to sing a song, and then we're going to hear uh, Brother Tommy Brooks Brother come up, Texas. and he's going to preach the word. Amen. 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 From Texas. Amen. 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 From Texas. Come on. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.
uh, uh, said about Job. You all know what happened uh, with Job. Uh, amen. Somebody, uh, uh, you know how the devil approached uh, God, and the devil is bold. He, he'll approach God. He, he, you know, if the devil approached God, he'll approach us. Am I right about it? So I want us to understand. He approached uh, God. He asked him. Uh, he said, "God, ask him what you've been doing." He said, "I've been down there on that earth, going in and out of homes, going in and out of lives, in and out." A church bill. I'm tearing up some stuff. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to write about it. That's what he was doing. That's what the devil is all about. He was tearing up some He was shaking up the world, man. And, and God said, hey, hold on. Have you considered my servant Job? He said, no. Uh, no, 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 no. You got an edge around him. And I can't get to him. Now, I don't know about you. The reason I've been baptized, the reason I'm holding to the scripture, the reason I take communion every Sunday, the reason I call my Myself a Christian, the reason I've been baptized for the remission of my sins is because I won't be sealed. I want to be sealed, I said. I want the hedge around me, Ephesians 113, which is the Holy Spirit, and I want the devil to have to ask God first. Amen. I'm just saying, before he come to Brooks home, I want him to get some, so, 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 I want him to ask God for permission. Yeah, yeah, that's the permissive will of God that happened with Job. Uh, the Satan could not touch Job because he knew it. He said, you got a hedge around. So God loosed him, but not because of what his friends said. Now, now they gave me a take out. They gave me a something called "Let God Judge." I'm gonna get to that part, uh, but I, I need to warm. I need. I've been bumped. I got bumped from this morning, bumped from this evening, bumped again. I'm finally up. I've been bumping, bumping. It don't matter to me when I preach. I can preach in the morning, evening. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm Tommy Brooks. In case you didn't know, some like me, some don't. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> I don't bother me. I just do what I do. You do what you do. And this is the way I do it. <laughs> I didn't seek to please men. Paul said, if you seek to please men, you're not the servant of Christ. That's some church Christ preacher who don't like me. But not because I don't have anything to them. They just personally don't like some of the things I say. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Verse 2. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu. Ah, the son of Barachel, the Zutite, Zutite, of kindred of Ram, the kindred of Ram, against Job, was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Elihu wrath is kindled against Job now, not against the friend, it's against Job. He said Job uh, justified himself rather than again. God never said this. This is this is his judgment of Job. Amen. And, and verse number three, he said, and also his three friends he, was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now, he's also, uh, he, he, uh, Elihu's wrath is against the three friends and he says because they had found no answer. They couldn't give Job an answer for what was going on in his life. Now, some of y'all got some stuff going on in your life that men and women can't give the answer to. He said, well, why am, I, why am I children? Why am I going through this? Why, am I, why do I have cancer? Why, why is it me? Why did my child die? Why did my brother die? There's a lot of whys that we can't answer, but God knows the answer to it. Yeah, now, now, now here it is. Uh, Eli, he was upset with Job and his friends. And the verse 4 said, now, Elihu had waited Till Job has spoken. Because they were uh, elder, older than Elihu. And when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Zudak, uh, answered and said, I am young. And you are very old. <laughs> one, thing, one thing to be old, there's another thing to be very old. <laughs> you show sure up old when you're very old. 
Because he better the name of Jesus. Yes, it was your enough old folk. <laughs> and then, Whereas I was afraid yes, and does not show you mine opinion. Opinion. I said they should speak and multitude of years should teach. So if you was thinking uh, that these men, because of their age, should have wisdom. So if you respect his elders, and so should we. But understand this, bro. Just because you gray headed, that don't make you my judge. Yeah, bro, I've been preaching 50 years, so? Oh, uh, brother, tell me that. You, you tell me, uh, I've been preaching the gospel 50 years, and all I'm talking about is I preach the cross. I, I didn't, you ask me what I do. I tell you what I do, you do what you want to do. I'm going to give an account to God. I believe in cross preaching. Now, I believe it should be preached. Now, that's up to you. You've been preaching 50 years and never preached the cross. That's not a wisdom statement in my mind. But the problem, you got an issue, but because you older than me, you've been preaching longer than me, don't make you a wise man. Notice this. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Bachelor of the Buzite of the kindred of the ramp against Job, was his kin was wrath kindled because he justified it. That's what he thought about Job. Now to get down here in verse number four, he waited. Uh, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken. Because they were ever. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these men, then his wrath was kindled. Okay, now Elihu the son of Bachelor answered and said, I am young, you are very old, wherefore I'm afraid and does not show you my opinion. Now, I said this about ages and days. So he's looking at wisdom and age. I want to get back to that point. He's looking at wisdom and age. But remember, Jeroboam. Listen. You all remember Jeroboam? Yes, sir. He took the advice of who? Uh -huh. Of the young men. Yes, and he went wrong. But you remember uh, when Jesus was writing on the ground? All right. And the men said, we caught her. We caught her. And it there. Now, something wrong with that anyway, because how did you catch her and then catch him? Yeah. <laughs> so there's something wrong with that whole beginning. At that. But then this is judgment going on. I'm getting to it. <laughs> I'm getting to the point of my judge. Just, you know, that, that's just a point. I'm, I just want to make the point. How did they catch the woman and they catch the man? Take two to tango. I think they say, they say that means dance or something like that. But I'm, I'm from here in Texas, so I ain't, you know, I ain't real you know, smart. I'm country boy, eh? But understand this. I want you to understand that on the contrast of, of uh, Jerobo, uh -huh. uh, these men, Jesus, he, he said, I tell you guys what you do. Uh, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. Now he said, let him that is without sin do what? Cast the first stone. Uh-uh. He said, first cast. That's a misquote. Whichever one you that have never, have not sinned, you the first one pick the stone up. Now go back and read that. It don't say cast the first stone. It said first cast. So now here's the, my, my, my only point is this. That, 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 that this work here? It's got some, got some microphone on it. I like microphone. Yeah, I like that. That's the kind of noise I like. Yeah, it so, yeah, helps me save my voice. Isn't that all right? Okay, so I'm just going to stay with this. And so, so all I'm saying is that, uh, that uh, anybody in here who can't, who have never seen, you go ahead and you first, you the first one to stand up in here. Be the first one to stand up on your feet. Huh? Yeah, yeah, here's, the, here's, the, so, uh, here's my point, is that if you read the text, it says uh, that the old men... <laughs> We were asking this guy out there first. It took them young boys a few minutes to figure that thing out. But after them old men was up and down, because they knew they could not, they could not throw the first stone. They could not throw, be the first to throw the stone. Okay. But here's a caution. 
There are all the people who do not have the experience and wisdom of a spiritual man or woman. That's it. That's it. There are some elders in the in the church that are in the in the eldership because they owe, not because they qualify. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And then you, you got to watch them tricky trustees. And then, amen, somebody. And I just wanted to talk. That just because you old or you call yourself elder don't mean you have wisdom. Amen. The, the, the apology, I mean, this is really the thing. I got to get to this. Is, is the fact that uh, when people try to give you advice, here's the thing about I don't understand. Is that how is it the older person going to give me advice? And they live 67, that might be there, three score and 10. If by reason four score. You 60, 70, or 80 years old and have not obeyed God. The ultimate wisdom is this. Before your life ends, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Please, that's what the, the conclusion of what matter? The matter of from birth to death. In between birth and death, the excellency of knowledge or wisdom as described in the Bible is that we seek ye first the kingdom of God. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We are to fear God and keep his commandments for this is not a partial duty. It's the whole duty of man and God shall bring every one into judgment with every secret thing is coming. So what are you saying, Brother Brooks? It, you, you old, and I talk to members of the church like, hold on, I talk to our senior members like you're too old to be showing out <laughs> no nah, nah, don't take it back you, you don't take stuff like that back if it was my mother in her age of 80s and my daddy when they were uh, born having problems with one of them in their late age I told them mom and daddy y'all too old yes sir <laughs> You ain't got no business messing around. Yes, you know, I tell our back home. You ain't got no business missing no worship services. Yes, Amen. Amen. If they got the wrong hand on the wheelchair, you are willing to get your social security check. Yes, <laughs> roll in the worship. Yes, Amen. Have them to roll in. Don't get too old. And we just say, man, woman, I'm trying to get to the point that the Bible is right, man. The Bible is right. Age don't mean you're wise. Look what he said. There is a, but even who back to verse eight, he said, there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of Almighty giveth them understanding. Now, even who, all of us got this animation, this spirit within us, going to return to God who gave it. We know that. But here's the point. Even who, somewhere he said, I know something wrong with what these guys are saying. Amen. And something within him was saying, this this cannot be right. But even you, uh, Eliphaz and Zophar and Bildad, and even what Job was saying, and even who saying, this cannot be right. You know what he said in verse 9? Just what I just got to say. Great men are not always wise. Don't wait the five minutes to tell me. Please tell me 15. Okay. Great. So I don't have an invitation. I know I only got 30 minutes. Uh, but I want to get this, get to the main point. I, but I, I want to get the, I, I think the text is exposing the text makes more sense in this text. Because he says, great men are not what? Always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. Now, here it is, the main thought in the text in my opinion. Great men are not always wise. Many men in this world and women are great men, but they're not wise men and women. There are, this applies to many men who are great and old, but not wise enough to pick up the Bible and obey God. All right. All right. All right. Amen, somebody. Ultimate obedience, ultimate sign of wisdom is obedience to God. That's what Jesus said. If, I, yeah, if any man hears his words of mine and builds them on a, on a, on a rock, I like it unto him as a wise man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Yes, sir. Let me get the high part. Neither do age understand judgment. Therefore, I said, hearken to me also, I will show my opinion. Eli is going to show his opinion. Behold, I waited for your words, I gave ear to your reasons. While ye yet search out what to say, ye are ye attended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. Come on. 
Hey, unless you should say, we have found wisdom, God thrust it. This is the verse they gave me. God thrust it him down. I mean, so he was basically telling Joe friend, don't say you wise. Don't say you found wisdom. Why? If you were wise, you would let God thrust him down. You would let God condemn him. You would let God judge him. Job, uh, uh, we, we was judging, it was condemning Job, and Eli was saying, that's not wise, and Eli was right. God knows that Job did not sin. They know that Job is not suffering because of something Job did. Job is suffering because of something God allowed. It's the permissive will of God, and no matter what's going on in our life, tribulation might be coming. Tribulation are coming. Trials coming. Trials dark on every hand. I might not understand how I'm going to make it to that blessed promised land. But I know God, you'll guide us by his side. We'll follow till we die. And we'll understand the whole brother. And the bad And the bad boy. So I know trials are coming. But for you to judge me on why I'm going through it, God is church. God is church. God is church. Let the Bible understand that it's teaching us that God is church. We can judge today, but it must be righteous judgment. John 7, 24, I think it is. But we must speak where the Bible speaks in our judgment. Read our opinions out of it and judge according to the scripture. If we preach the word, then if we preach the word, we if we preach the word, we're preaching the judge because in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. In the beginning. And we said John 12 40, he dead rejected me. Watch it now. He that rejected me and received it not my word. This is the word talking. Who was God in the beginning? He's now the son of man that came to a virgin Mary. And he that rejected me and received it not my word had one that judged him. The words that I spoke the same will judge you in the last day. Let me help us all understand, as long as we're preaching the word, we're preaching judgment. Because God gave the word. And great was the company of men that published it. How much time I got? Okay, thank you. Just, I want to do my, I want to do my end. Don't, don't short me. Let me go five minutes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if I come all the way from Houston, I spend all my time writing. I ain't trying to lose no five minutes. I want my all my time because I pay for my ticket. <laughs> Give me all my time. I came too far. And add some if you want to. Don't add to the word, but you can add to my time. If you like them brothers down in Texas, I got a little something to get you some more time. <laughs> some of them guys down there, some of them brothers, I told that brother one time, he said, come on, bro, preach on. I said, money talk. <laughs> well, now, now, let me get back to this so I want to get to the end of this. Y'all, y'all, slow down because y'all making me preach hard. I was trying not to. Uh, he, that, he that have not directed words against me, Neither will I answer him with your speech. He's he not taking Job's speeches personal against him. Also, he's not going to answer Job like his friend. They were amazed. Notice this. Once he called them out, they were amazed. There's some people who I have amazed, and who some, many of you sound preachers who call out God, they're amazed. They only, they'll talk about you, but they won't come to you. That amazes me. I mean, how are you going to talk about me, and you ain't never came to me? Man, your first person you go to is me. Got issue with what I said, come to me. Pull up your pants, gird up your loins, like God told. Like, and like a man. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> and that's why he told him. He said, fear not. Your eyes. I don't fear. 
Don't feel me. He can't hurt me. They were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking when I had waited. They, they spake not, but stood still and answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part. I will show my opinion. I am full of matter and the spirit within me, constraining me. Behold, my belly is as wine, which had no vent. It's ready to burst like new bottles. I speak and I maybe refresh. I would open my lips and answer. You know what I'm saying? I can't hold back. I'm going to have to go on and say it. I got to say it. I'm about to bust wide open. <laughs> he said, let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Me let him give fallen titles. For I know not giving fallen titles and so doing my maker with whom take me away. So all he's saying is the same thing. He was doing what we should not be doing. It's calling me in reverend. Well. Calling me in father. Yeah. A calling me and doctor. When Jesus said, you're all brethren. Because once you flatter them with a towel, they believe their opinion or judgment of something. And like we think that there's one person in the church who can make a judgment call of what we're doing right or wrong in the church. Let me tell you who makes the final judgment call. The scripture does. He is God. He's the one who makes the, I got it. He makes the final call. Not a reverend. Not a, a, not a father. Not a, not a, a, a doctor. But I want to just say this to you all. Understand this same time we elevate me and that's why I don't care if you put me on AM with the eight ten people here. I'm not asking for no nighttime, prime time station stuff in the election. So I'm telling you, you want to put me, I'm going to do my job. But put me in the morning, tell me that I do the same thing. Yeah, you don't need no flattery. We what we saying we we preaching to the Almighty God of heaven, for the Almighty God of heaven. Amen. And the attitude should be now. I want to say, great men not always wise. I mean, you know, Billy Graham, my American preacher, just just died. Didn't he? Great men, wasn't it? That's what they said. Well, I want y'all to quote this scripture with me real quick. Everybody, let's do it together now. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish. No, you, you got that scripture. Yes, sir. You got King James Version. Yes, sir. Read John 3.16 for me. And everyone who said this word, Come on. I want you to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I heard good preachers preach this week. Come on. Yeah. I heard some of them quote this just like this. Come on. Come on. The way Billy Graham, oh, I got to stay in front of this. The, the way the grace doctrine preaches in the moment of some of the modern translations is written it. For God so loved the world uh -huh. that, he that he gave his, his only begotten Son, son that, that whosoever believeth, believeth in him should not, not perish. shall. Amen. Should not perish. Now, if you quote it shall, you did the same thing that the devil did in the garden. God told him you shall surely die, and he said you shall not. Calvinism, grace doctrine has taken John 3.16 along with Billy Graham, a great man who changed one scripture, misquoted it, and it led to faith only doctrine. All you got to do is believe in Jesus and you're going to heaven. That's what most Baptists believe. Amen. Somebody, that's the stuff I came out of and they're still misquoting it and we don't need to be in that group of people. Why you bringing that? I'm just saying that's the trick of the great preacher. I dropped that on you to say great men just because he was great, he was not wise because he misquoted and he left the truth of the scripture. If he was wise, he wouldn't preach what Jesus said, preach what, what a long time ago the judge. God is our judge. God is our judge. And he came, Jesus came to this world. The judge rolled in on the donkey, came through a virgin Mary, rolled in town on the donkey. Am I right upon it? Grew up with stature, wisdom. Them. They took him in the last 24 hours. Took the judge with the Gethsemane. Asked the judge, uh, he said, let this cup pass. But the judge wouldn't let the cup pass. The judge went on. From there, he went to six trials at night. The judge would beat by a little flat jelly. He would whip with a whip. Uh, from the thorn put on his head. Am I right about Roll from the back. Uh, put a cross on the judge's back. Let him up. Calvary's here. Uh, took him up on the cross. Uh, Nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Hung the judge up between two thieves. I'm right about it. He stayed on the cross six long hours. I'm talking about the judge. He 
stayed on the cross and the judge said it was finished. They took the judge down, buried him in a borrowed tomb. But God the Father loosed the pains of death up from the grave he rose. With power. What went on the world? And preach the gospel. He said, all power been given unto me in heaven and earth. When he got up, he went down the son of me. And God the Father raised him up as the son of God. And when he got up, he got up with power. He said, he that rejected me and received not my words and wanted to judge at him. The words that I spoke, the same. We're judged in the last day. Yes, Members of the church, you need to know. Yes, We're going to get judged. Preachers, you need to know. Yeah. We're going to get judged. Elders need to know. Yeah. We're going to get judged. Members need to know. Yeah. We're going to get judged. And the judge said zero minutes. Yeah. <laughs> this is my joy. Yeah. I'm going to be obedient. Yeah. Don't forget. My message was, I was just pointing, just let God be a judge. And on my way down, he'll judge the heretics. All we got to do is preach the word. Amen. He'll judge those who wrote the Queen James Version. Amen. He'll judge the homosexuals. Amen. He'll judge those who wrote, wrote the Baptist Manual. Yeah. The Methodist Discipline. The Catholic, Catholic Catechism. Amen. And you're going to judge me if I don't sit down. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great job, Amen. Yes, sir.